Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cute diamond easel fold card. So you just lift up here and inside you can write your message and then this piece just sits in there and then the whole thing folds flat and it will fit into a 6x6 envelope. Once you see how to make it, very very straightforward and you can easily adapt this to any card size that you want. So yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and prepared everything, so this should hopefully be a nice quick tutorial. Keep everything there. Okay, so you can start off with a six by six card blank. So I've got this purple one here, which, which was actually cut from a piece of 12 by six, and then I've just scored at six inches along the 12 inch side. Okay, and then fold in half and you've got your card blank. You then need to add another score line. So open up your card blank, okay, so if you've got it pre-scored already, pop it in here and that line there should sit at the six inches, which in my case it does. And then what you want to do is score another line at three inches. So if you've got a whole piece of cardstock that you're starting off from scratch, you're going to score at three and at six. But because I've done mine before the video, I'm just now going to score at three, okay. I fold in half and then that one you're going to fold in again okay and there you've got your easel fold okay so just standard easel card we've got at the minute now with some extra little cut lines you'll get your diamond shape so what I will do actually is keep so if you fold it outwards you've got the large square facing away from you we'll just work on this piece here first along this side just with a ruler and a pencil you want to mark halfway, so this is six inches, so we're going to mark at three. I'm just going to pop a little pencil mark in there. And then you can draw a pencil, you can cut straight away. I'll draw a pencil for the video, but you're just going to do a pencil mark from the centre there to the score line there. And again, this one here, like so. Okay, so now you've got this diamond shape. And now you can use your trimmer if you want to cut it that way. So you just pop it in your trimmer and just line up that pencil mark or you can cut it using your scissors or of course using a cutting knife and ruler. I'm just going to pop that through like so. You might want to keep these for more decoration but um, I'll just pop them in my scrap. So now we've got this effect and when it lies flat you can see where we're going with this. So now all we need to do is take the same triangles but off of that base piece. So get rid of that one for the moment. Now if you want you can just lie that flat, I'm just going to burnish that again, and you can just trace like so. Okay so that's the quickest way to do it. If you're worried it might not be exact or you want to measure it again, all you want to do is this piece here again mark halfway there, so I can see mine's at three and then you'll do halfway on that side and halfway on that side. Okay so halfway on all the sides so again I'm just going to get this one and just trim those or cut them. So it's a nice quick card to do and these are great if you want to do a bulk as well because you can go ahead and get all this piece kind of prepared and um, yeah then decorate afterwards. So that is the card base now already. So next we just need to decorate it. So I've already gone ahead and prepared all of these pieces. So I've got this piece here which will fit perfectly right down here. You want to line your points up with the point here and you will have a nice one eighth of an inch border. Now this piece here is four by four. You want two pieces because this same four by four piece is what we're going to have when we stick on here. I just need to cut another piece of purple which I'll show you in a minute but that's the piece for the top. So first of all we we'll just decorate the inside. So I've already gone ahead and popped some tape on here. Okay so I'm going to see I'm going to have the stripes that way, so just again, just pop that in there, spend some time making sure you get them nice and even, like so. And then this piece here, let's grab my trimmer again. So this piece here measures two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Now what I find is if you've got double sided tape that you're using, pop your tape on first because it's easier because it's a square shape and then pop it in on the diagonal so it's in a diamond shape. You want to make sure you've got point to point along the blade there and just cut that one in half. If you're using wet glue then it doesn't matter. Now these pieces here will sit perfectly 
in here again with that nice 1 8 of an inch border so I always already went ahead and checked all those sizes so now you can see I've got the double sided tape you know it just covers it much easier rather than you having to kind of cut it at all the angles and I've got that tiny bit right at the end there but if you want to add some more tape to it obviously you can and then like I said just make sure you're getting that point kind of there and there and it should all line up nicely. Gone a little bit crooked on that one, but that's what makes it homemade. So again, on this one here, get that one a bit, <laughs> that one straighter. Okay, so that's the base all done. Okay, so this piece here is just over four and a quarter. So if you're cutting on your trimmer or anything like that, you want it just a little bit over. I just find if you go over slightly, then you know it's definitely gonna cover this section here. So now when I sit that one in here, it perfectly matches up. Okay, so it's just little, just slightly over four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some tape within this part here. So bring it over this way and then pop it down so you know that you're getting it in the right orientation. You just wanna mirror it up so it perfectly sits over. piece there. So now when that one comes up, there's your diamond easel. So what I would say at this point is just go over and just go and burnish all of those score lines. And then we can decorate the front. So this piece now is going to go on there. Now I'd already given you the measurements for that piece, which is four by four. I've got a mat over the top there, which is three and a half by three and a half. And then I've used this lovely unicorn and sentiment. All the papers I'm using today are from the first edition Chasing Rainbows paper pack, which is this one here. So you get all the cut parts, which are there. And then you get all these gorgeous, lovely holographic um, papers that go with it. So I'm just going to stick this one down. Okay, again, keep it nice and flat. And just spend some time making sure. There we go. That all sits nicely. Then, so you've got somewhere to write your message. I'd already gone and stamped this piece here. This is the Have a Magical Day stamp set from the Chasing, no not the Chasing Rainbows, from the Crafty Panda stamp set. I don't believe it's available anymore. I've had it a couple of years now. It was by Hobby Base but if I can find the link I will share it because it was a lovely stamp set but I do know a lot of you have it. So this one here will fit perfectly. Oh I didn't give you the measurement. Let me line. Actually I could do with going a little bit shorter. I'm going to trim that down a bit because I don't like that. I've not got the same border for some reason. So let me stick this down and then I will give you that measurement. Okay, so this one here, it was two and three quarters because it was a three, yeah, two and three quarters by five and three quarters. Okay, so that's now inside there. And then on the back here, the reason I decorated it is when it lies flat, now you could keep that plain if you want, but I thought it's quite nice. You can see there, I've got that polka dot paper. So for that piece I've got here, so it's the same size as that. So two and three quarters by five and three quarters. So I'm just gonna stick that one down. Again, open it up, lie it down that way. This piece, it looks like I cut it correctly. I don't know what I've done wrong with the other one. I love this card, it's beautiful. Perfect for this collection. There you go, I just think so much shimmer and shine and then this here I've already created my little topper so I put foam adhesive on a circle die cut here which is two and a half diameter and then these are part of the die cuts these are two inches exactly so I just use my two inch punch and it will cut those out in fact I've got the strip here to show you take that one off so you can just line it up perfectly and it will cut out those pieces for you. So I went ahead and cut that again, put it on foam adhesive and then finished it off with a bow there. So I'll just take off my backing. And then bring this piece up and it's entirely up to you. You may want it quite far back. I'm gonna have it so that my bow is in the middle and I'm bringing it quite close to the front like so. And then it will just automatically kind of find its place. And there you have it. I'll bring that one up there. Obviously if I lean it back it's going to fall but 
you can see it's got such a nice profile. Now you may decide that you want to add more pattern paper here and have your message here that you write or write your message on the very back here. Obviously don't do it there because you will see that because that's when it's closed that's how this looks when it's in the envelope. It stands perfectly, it's easy to post and it fits in a nice envelope so again yeah so there you have it. Two really fun cards that will work for so many occasions and um, male and female as well so I think they are wicked. So I hope you agree, hope you like them, if you did please give me a thumbs up and I will be back again soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching, bye!